Kenny Aronson, myself, and Mark were so in sync with liking the same stuff and wanting to do the same kind of music. We were like freaks. You know, we were trying to be Cream. We were trying to be Jethro Tull. We were trying to be Jimi Hendrix. And they were doing things that guys were seven, eight years old and them were doing. We were ignited by the whole English music scene. <laughs> first met him, he's playing rhythm. But then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he, he played great leads. Kenny Aronson was, and still is, an exceptional bass player. Not too many bass players as good as him ever. Spectacular, spectacular. Mitch Mitchell, Bonham, Baker, Keith Moon, the craziness, but he had the chops, he had the precision. He was a great drummer. Amazing intensity. It was really unbelievable. We played so friggin' loud. Neil Bogart was the president of Kama Sutra and Buddha Records. He signed us up. It was all so common denominator. Brooklyn, street, just another thing. We got a record deal. Now we record. We didn't know how to record. We went into the studio and we made the first album. We uh, went to Bell Sound Studios in New York City and recorded the uh, first album titled Dust. Oh, my guitar is not loud enough here. Oh, the bass is going to come up. Oh, you can't hit drums. You know, it was like everybody was just like this free fall. We didn't know. Everybody wanted to be the loudest. <laughs> We played uh, with a lot of bands, uh, Alice Cooper, Uriah Heep, King Crimson. We were huge in St. Louis. That Midwest seemed to be a hotbed for uh, hard rock music. We'd go there, we'd sell out uh, places like Cobo Hall or something like that for like six, 7,000 people. We were amazed. <laughs> went back to Bell Sound to do a second album in 71. Bell Sound had redone itself and it was a much more updated studio. Great sound, great production, Kenny Kern and Richie Wise producing. I used to, at home, plot out these songs, tracks, what track I was going to put, the guitar on, the acoustic. I was really starting to think like a producer who knew that that's what I would turn into. We got a lot of, uh, a lot of kudos for doing the Frank Frazetta covers because that was the first time anybody used the Frazetta artwork for an album cover, and we beat out Molly Hatchet for that one. So the second album came out, and I think there were more gigs in most of the same places we had played after the first album. The gigs didn't really get any better, and it seemed that the whole thing was sort of like, for me, not going anywhere. I don't remember a specific thing other than just realizing that it was over. In the end of 1972, Dust broke up. Kenny and Richie had producer uh, aspirations. Because the second album was so quote unquote interestingly produced or what have you, they let me and Kenny Kerner go into the studio with some other acts. Neil Bogart discovered this band called Kiss and uh, Kenny and Richie produced their first two albums. The destiny's interesting. Here we are, three guys that basically couldn't do anything else other than music. And that's what I did for 30 more years as a producer. Kenny Aronson played with, God knows everybody, Billy Idol, Billy Squire, Bob Dylan, and uh, so many other people too. Mark, the drums was certainly an extension of his humanity. And the logic of him getting into that Ramon situation was just per perfect. I mean, fit like glue. Hey! 